वेलकम फ्रेंड्स लेट अस कंटिन्यू टू स्टडी स्टीम जनरेशन ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल काइंडली लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग ऑफ कंबाइंड सेपरेटिंग एंड थ्रोटलिंग कैलोरी मीटर so separating calorie meter and the limitation of it is complete separation of dry steam and water is not possible and due to that it gives only approximate value similarly what are the limitations of throttling calorie meter this method cannot be employed when steam has more water content it means separating calorie meter alone is not giving us the approximate value similarly throttling calorie meter alone is not capable to give the accurate value when water content is more so what is the chance yes we can combine this two calorie meter first steam can be or wet steam having more water can be taken to the separating calorie meter where more quantity of water is separated and then after steam with less quantity of water can be taken to the throttling calorie meter and then the dryness fraction can be measured so that is known as the combination of separating and throttling calorie meter and in this calorie meter wet steam is passed through separating calorie meter first and then throttling calorie meter most of the water content is removed from the wet steam in separating calorie meter and then after wet steam having less water content is passed through the throttling calorie meter thus we get nearly accurate value of dryness fraction of wet steam now combination or that is combined separating and throttling calorie meter so first of all we will go for the separating calorie meter that is outer chamber then perforated cup or separator here the steam pipe from where the steam is supplied this one is the you can say measurement of the mass of water and this is the measurement of the mass of steam from here steam is taken to the uh, throttling calorie meter let us see yes so from here steam is taken to the throttling calorie meter and it passes through the throttle valve and pressure before the throttle valve is measured and this is the measurement chamber or vessel uh, after throttling process so here it measures the temperature and this measures the pressure after throttling and the steam coming out from this vessel is measured to measure the mass of the steam so that is the you can say construction of combined separating and throttling calorie meter now working valve is opened initially so the steam will enter into the perforated cup suddenly its direction will change so water will be filled up inside the or the below the perforated cup which can be measured at the left hand side the steam separated or steam which is having a light weight it moves up and then it goes down from here it is entering into the throttling calorie meter again valve is opened due to that we can measure the pressure before throttling then the steam passes through the throttle valve where the throttling process of steam takes place after throttling its pressure reduces but enthalpy remains constant after throttling steam enters into the vessel where its temperature is measured that is t2 and pressure is measured that is pressure after throttling and the mass of the steam is measured here at the bottom of the vessel in a throttling calorie meter so dryness fraction of steam in steam main pipe can be measured by combined separating and throttling calorie meter and it can be calculated using the equation x is equals to x1 multiplied by x2 where x1 is dryness fraction of steam measured by separating calorie meter and x2 is dryness fraction of steam measured by 
throttling calorimeter. Now, how to calculate x1 and x2? Again, for separating calorimeter, equation is same as we have studied in the separating calorimeter. That is, x1 is equals to mass of dry steam divided by mass of dry steam plus mass of water. And using that, we can calculate x1, where ms is the mass of steam separated in kilogram, mass of steam passed through the separating to throttling calorimeter, mass of steam entering into throttling calorimeter, mass of steam condensed after throttling in calorimeter. So all these are the different words that can be written or that can be given in the numerical. But ultimately it gives us this one value that is ms and mw is the mass of water collected in kilogram. And using these two value we can calculate the x1. For throttling calorimeter, so again and specific enthalpy before throttling and specific enthalpy after throttling. So H1 before throttling is equals to H2 after throttling and there can be the three cases. Initially wet can be converted into dry, wet can be converted into superheated or wet can be converted into wet which is not possible to measure the dryness fraction. So if it is wet is converted into dry as we have studied Yes, it is H wet is equals to H dry. So it is here it will be X2 and we can calculate the X2 using this equation. Now if the case B is there, that is wet is converted into superheated. Again as we have discussed, H wet is equals to H soup. And this is the equation. The same which we have studied when we have studied the throttling calorimeter. So here we can calculate the X2. Case 3 is not possible. And finally, dryness fraction of steam in steam main pipe is measured by combined calorimeter is equals to, that is x is equals to x1 multiplied by x2. Thank you.